So during the molt, Giselle went off her food for three days. Now it's not abnormal for her to not eat for one or two days because I feed her some pretty fatty ground squirrel, but three days uh, was a bit much. And in that clip in the background, you, you would have noticed that her eye was closing up. And here is a very obvious shot of that. And once I realized that she had gone off her food and I noticed her eyelid closing, it seemed pretty obvious that it was West Nile virus. And once she became lethargic and a little wobbly, which you'll see in some next clips, I knew that that was definitely the case. So I tried to get my hands on meloxicam, which reduces brain swelling as soon as I could. But up until that point, uh, the goal is just to support them as best you can, which means hydrating because I noticed she, she wasn't coming down to her water and getting some food in her so she wouldn't die of starvation. Now, normally during the molt, Giselle doesn't let me handle her, even though she's imprinted and I go in there every day, I usually don't mess with her. And so the fact that she was letting me come up to her like this and, and put the glove right up to her and try to get her to step, step up, um, it was a pretty obvious sign to me that she was sick. And you'll notice in these clips that she's not very sure-footed, that she is very wobbly um, and sort of off her her base. You can see here her tail bobbing up and down a little. And even though that is a swing-type rope perch, she still usually is, is much more sure-footed. Um, and, and it's pretty obvious in this clip that she's just sort of lethargic, not very active, not moving around a lot. So uh, I was able to cut up some pigeon breast and starling breast, uh, no bone in it, and mix it with Pedialyte and hand her some tidbits. And she would eat about 10 grams a couple times a day. And I started doing that, and then I, you can see there the tail bobbing there and the wobble, uh, pretty obvious signs of her being a little off. So I started doing the feeding of the tidbits with the PD light to get her hydrated. Once I got the meloxicam, I was giving it to her every six hours for the first two days. And I did have to grab her up to do that. When I grabbed her up, I did uh, make sure to hydrate her with PD light, which I just put directly in her crop. And then I was able later, once she kind of got her footing back and her energy back the next day, I was able to begin um, putting the meloxicam pill in some of those tidbits and feeding her the tidbits. And then I moved to mouse. And again, I, I made sure to just keep her hydrated because she wasn't really moving that much and she wasn't coming down to her water. Uh, but it, it seemed to get her through it. I did have an instance a couple of weeks after she seemed to fully be through West Nile where she uh, started closing her eyelid again, but that has passed also. So I'm, I'm hoping that she's made it through completely. And fingers crossed, she is going to be ready to hunt soon. She did also have some pinched feathers, which is another obvious sign of, of dealing with West Nile virus. So needless to say, it was pretty scary, but she seems to have gotten through it. And uh, I'm hoping for a good year ahead of us.